if the holy spirit was not there jesus would not have risen and we would not have been awakened today i would like to preach the sermon on the topic of without the holy spirit Romans 8:11 says but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you dear friends if the holy spirit is not there there won't be a born again christian if the holy spirit is not there there won't be a bible even second peter 121 says for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man but holy men of god spake as they were moved by the holy ghost without the holy spirit we can't do anything so i would like to talk or uh, preach with seven sub topics today number 1 then why we don't depend on the holy spirit as we ought to depend is it not a very important question we know that without the help of the holy spirit we can't do anything but we are so foolish not to depend not to seek the help of the holy spirit is it not ridiculous yes many times we know mentally the doctrine of the holy spirit and the work of the holy spirit but we don't understand the holy spirit in a deep way in a spiritual way and knowingly our confidence is in our abilities in our talents in our knowledge in our wisdom how oh, how many times because of this we are failing failing a lot it is a spiritual work what i do is a spiritual work how many times i try to do in the arms of the flesh in the strength of the arms of the flesh preaching from our minds with our wisdom oh dear friends how much we do this truly speaking So this morning let the holy spirit of God search our hearts and work a deep work in our hearts Many times we depend on our old experience We are truly ignorant in a spiritual way that we need a fresh anointing of the holy spirit every time every time when we do his work we are helpless 100% 100% we are helpless is it not so is it not truly a statement that we could that it could be said of us yes definitely we don't depend on the holy spirit as we ought to depend as we ought to depend
The second thing is, what is really needed to depend on the Holy Spirit? What is truly, really needed to depend on Him, the Holy Spirit of God? We need the humility. How deeply we need this humbleness in our minds and hearts. Many times, our own self-confidence with pride, hidden pride in our hearts, prevents the, prevents us, the Holy Spirit, work, could be revealed or could be done only in the humble hearts of those who depend on Him. That's why many times the Holy Spirit of God is not working through us. It's being blocked by our concealed inner pride. Lack of humility. Many times in our hearts we praise ourselves for the good sermon we preached. Yes, many, many times oh, we think we are better preachers. Oh, I could preach a very good sermon today. We fail to give glory to God. We fail, utterly fail, inwardly. Probably this may not be revealed to the people, but the inner part of our hearts know that, that we don't give glory to God. Truly we need the spiritual humility, humility. Feeling our own unworthiness. How unworthy I am. And how I am so unworthy for this high calling. In what way am I fit for this call? Oh, my sinfulness, my evil heart, my pride. Oh, so many things makes me an unworthy creature not to fit to handle the word of God. Not, we are not fit to this, to handle this holy God's word. We are unworthy vessels. Oh, we need to understand and feel the unworthiness of ourselves. Moses felt it. Yes, Moses, when he was called in the Mount Sinai. Exodus 4.10 says, And Moses said unto the Lord, O oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither hear to four nor sins thou hast spoken and to thy servant but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue O oh God I am not worthy I am not worthy I am not eloquent neither heretofore nor since thou hast spoken and to thy servant but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue Dear friends, where there is no humility, where there is no feeling of our own unworthiness, I tell you, the Holy Spirit of God won't be there. There is no place for Him. It is a shameful thing to do the business of the Lord without His Help and assistance. It's the same full thing I tell you, dear friends. However, 
we are eloquent however we are talented however we may be uh, thinking that we are so big i tell you dear friends is a shameful thing to preach the word of god without the help of the holy spirit of god without being given the honor and glory to him robbing away the glory of god for ourselves think of isaiah Isaiah 6:5 says then said i o oh, is me for i am undone because i am a man of unclean lips and i dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips for mine eyes have seen the king the lord of hosts i am a man of unclean lips i dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips oh dear friends i tell you without the help and assistance of the holy ghost i tell you your lips are unclean unless the holy spirit of god put the fire of god on your lips and it is being cleaned you are not fit to preach the word of god you are not fit you are utterly unfit i tell you i am i am unfit oh what a pity it is what a pity it is think of our past failures and sins oh let us think of our past failures and sins let us humble ourselves whatever way the possible way that you could humble 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 many times i used to think of my past failures many many years have gone but i think of my sins in which i was completely tied up it makes me to be humble it makes me to be humble do i really mourn of my inability not to depend on him how many times i depend on myself oh god i could not depend on thee i mourn for that how quickly my pride suits up how quickly my self confidence suits us suits us. up quickly dear friends many times truly speaking we don't acknowledge the holy spirit of god and we don't depend on him completely oh lord give me a heart to depend on the holy spirit of god alone. and nothing else and nothing else the third one is without the work of the holy spirit our preaching and witnessing is a waste is a vain thing without the work of the holy spirit of god our preaching is a vain one it's a waste why could we not see so many conversions in the ministry in our church why people are not being convicted of their sins and turn to god because the spirit of god is not working because the spirit of god is not in our preaching we spent many hours in preparing the sermon but we failed to understand that if the holy spirit does not authorize and approve it is a waste we spent many hours in preparing the sermon that's very good but equally how much of time do i spend in prayer prevailing 
asking the help of God. How many times I am just falling? And the fourth point is how to depend on Him fully. How to depend on the Holy Spirit of God fully. Let us acknowledge with a true sincere heart, with a deep conviction that without the help of the Holy Spirit, I can't do anything. I can't do anything. Let us tell him, oh God, without you, I can't do anything. Even the most Simple little thing, I can't. Know that you are standing before the dry bones. They are eternal souls. Yes, you stand before the dry bones. Hearts are hardened. Is closed unless the Holy Spirit of God breaks the hardened hearts and open it up. Like the heart opened in Lydia. Who will open the heart? It is the Holy Spirit of God. You and I can't do that. Man himself is a fallen one. He is desperately wicked. He can't open his own heart. He is dead in sin and trespasses. It is only the Holy Spirit of God could open the hardened hearts. In Ezekiel 37, one says, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. Dry bones. 37 second verses and caused me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry. Very dry. How truly portrays the heart of people of this day. And the third verse says, And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest, thou knowest. So many preachings, so many sermons, many preachers, but where is the real fruit? Where is the preaching with the fullness of the Holy Spirit? Unless the Holy Spirit works, nobody will be convicted of their rotten, sinful, fallen nature. Not a single soul will be saved. Not a single soul. Probably we can do ministry for so many years using all methodology to make it, the church grander. And in many ways we can do so many things unless the Holy Spirit of God works. Not a single soul will be saved. Or oh, even until our death, we may do ministry, but souls will not be saved. 
we should have a deep longing for the work of the Holy Spirit of God. In our own lives and in souls of others, deep hunger and thirst for the work of the Holy Spirit of God in us, in our church, in our localities. Oh dear people, is there a hunger and thirst for the work of the Holy Spirit of God in us? Fourth point. If so, what must we do now? Now. If, it's, if, it's, if this is the thing, what must I do now? What must we do now? Let us repent deeply of our past failures of not depending on the Holy Spirit of God. Let us repent deeply. Let us repent deeply. Let us pray earnestly for his work in, the, in our midst. Let us pray earnestly. Do or die. Matthew Gospel 11, 12 says, And from the days of John the Baptist, until now the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Men like Spurgeon, before going to the pulpit, they used to wait upon the Lord, crying out to God for God's help and anointing. And there were occasions in which he was not able to rise, and there were deacons to help him, to make him stand straight and to be taken to the pulpit. Oh, dear people, ministry is not a playful thing. It's not a playful thing. Do or die. You're called to die for the cause of God. For the cause of God. You are on the altar for the cause of God. Expect the work of the Holy Spirit of God with faith, with faith. Because His word will never fail. Depend on the power of the Holy Spirit in using the powerful word of God. A powerful weapon to slay down the people. Fifth point, what will happen when we depend on the Holy Spirit of God? What will happen? What will truly happen? Dry bones will surely be risen. No more dry bones, they will surely be risen. Ezekiel 37, 4 says, again, he said unto me, Prophecy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Fifth verse says, Thus say the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. Sixth verse says, And I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord ye shall know that I am the Lord God seventh verse says so I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied, there was a noise, 
and behold a shaking and the bones came together bone to his bone i prophesied as i was commanded take hold of the word of god and preach it is all that you need to do it the spirit of god will take care of the rest when it is preached with, with all sincerity with burden for souls it was says and when i beheld lo the sinews and the flesh came up upon them on the skin covered them above but there was no breath in them ninth verse says then said he unto me prophesy unto the wind prophesy son of man and say to the wind thus say the lord god come from the four winds o breath and breathe upon this slain that they may live tenth verse says so i prophesied as he commanded me i prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came unto them and they lived and stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army what a great thing if god could give us souls as a great exceeding great army or oh, can it be done yes it could be with god it is imp- it is possible and they lived and stood up upon their feet dry bones stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army souls truly saved what a great honor to the name of the lord god his name will be honored exceedingly when we preach with the help of the holy spirit of god sixth point i would like to encourage you with some examples early church when the word of god was preached people were thronging the holy spirit of god worked in a mighty way there were 3000 and on another occasion 5000 when saint paul was preaching in a dip the most difficult places people were converted is it because of the wisdom knowledge of saint paul it is the work of the holy spirit of god when george whitfield was preaching oh in the open air thousands of people gathered they were in tears repenting for their sins turning to god oh where are those days where are those days oh god bring those days back we are badly in need of such days jonathan edward when he was preaching in northampton what a great power of the holy spirit of god manifested men like spurgeon he didn't go to the bible college but when he spoke the word of god there was power in the mission there was power in the word of god there was power in the word of god oh mighty things were happening souls were converted it was said at every meeting souls were converted remember the past revivals how the holy spirit of god saved hard and hearts oh dear people what a great thing it was what a mighty thing it was the seventh point give glory and honor always to this triune god 
Give glory and honor to the Holy Spirit of God. Many times after you preach a good sermon, the devil comes and pat on your back and say, Well done. You have preached a wonderful sermon. Oh, what a great man you are. So fantastic, excellent. He pats at the back and say, He makes us fools, fools. Nothing but. When we say, Oh, yes. Today they preached the sermon that I preached. Oh, what a wonderful thing. When some people come and say, Oh, pastor, you preached a wonderful sermon today. Oh, you can't even sleep that night. Your heart is so much taken up by the praises of men. The devil made a fool of us. Oh, after you preach, mourn that you failed in the mission. You mourn, you mourn, go to the closet and weep. Oh God, how I fail to depend on the Holy Spirit as I ought to depend. How much in the midst of preaching I fail to depend on the Holy Spirit of God. Oh God, forgive me, forgive me. What a disgrace it is to thy holy name. How I fail to preach with real deep concern and fervor. Oh God, forgive me, forgive me. Go to the closet. Let us never be fooled by the devil. Dear friends, how will be, how will be, Already we passed so much of time. How many sermons we wasted because we didn't depend, depend on the Holy Spirit of God. How many sermons we preached without seeing the real conviction in the hearts of people. Oh, we failed a lot. But still it is not too late. Let us go and cry to him, Oh God, Oh Lord God, Without the help of the Holy Spirit of God, I can't do anything. When I speak to your brother or sister, when I do some counseling, when I witness, when I preach, oh God, help me to depend, not on my wisdom, but on the Holy Spirit of God alone. Oh, the Lord will be pleased with you. He'll be pleased with you and I'm sure the Lord will bless the humble work that you and I do. Souls will surely be converted. I tell you the God whom we believe is not dead. He is living. The power of the word of God is not fail. It will never fail. Let us believe. Let us have faith in God. The God who raised the dry bones and made it to stand on the feet an exceeding army, great army, or the Lord will bless our work and raise up many, many people as his witnesses to be raised up for the glory of God. May the Lord bless our souls with the preaching of the word of God to us. Amen. Amen.